All right, today I'm gonna to be sharing our proven four-step process for generating consistent leads on LinkedIn using an outbound lead generation strategy. Now, this strategy is effective, I guess, in any form of outbound strategy, but we're gonna be looking specifically at LinkedIn. So each of these four Ps, I like to call them, four steps to the process, really represents more of a chain link because without any one of them, the whole thing comes crashing down. So I'm excited to share it with you. You're gonna learn a whole lot, get your pen, paper, and ready to learn. Cheers. So let's get straight into it. Let's talk about the four Ps. Starting with the first one, which is profile. Profile or positioning. So the core foundation to generating leads and finding new clients on LinkedIn really stems from your personal profile. So not your business account, it's your personal profile because we're reaching out to people. We're, we're a per, you're a person, we're reaching out to people. Even though it's B2B, really, it's technically P2P. We're trying to build real relationships and connect with real human beings. So it comes down to your personal profile. And we wanna make sure that your personal profile is optimized so that it resonates with your target market and it hits all the markers with the things that they care about more than anything in the world. And it's not about how smart you are, how many qualifications you are um, have, it's about the thing that your clients care most about and that is themselves. It's not about you. Your personal profile really needs to take into account what is it, the, the, the core pain points that they're suffering in their business at the moment, and how is it that you can address or help them solve these. But if I'm gonna break it down into something that's more actionable for you, I'll put it into three core components. Now, there's a lot you can do with your personal profile, like a, a lot. Too much to, to that, if you try to do everything, before you get started generating leads, you'll, you'll spend too much time and you'll be wasting, like you could be getting cash flow into your business. So there's three core things that you really need to optimize before you can start getting moving on LinkedIn, generating new leads. So that is your headline, imagery, images, and your about section. Now this is kind of like a little mini funnel, your personal profile, page and it works like a little funnel. So the first thing that people are likely to run into is your headline. It's the first thing they see. When you reach out to someone, they'll see your headline. Now your headline is this little, it's like your position. It's underneath your profile picture. And when you reach out and do things on the platform, people see it, it's the first thing they see. Now, if it resonates with your target market, there's a very good chance what they're gonna do is they're gonna click on that and they'll end up on your profile. Now. The first thing they see when they land on your profile are the images. And the, the sad truth is that human beings are incredibly judgmental. And we make very, very fast first assessments based on what we see. And your profile image, if it's not professional, if it doesn't look sharp, if it doesn't look open and friendly and engaging, people will make a very first quick assessment and it's very likely that um, they're gonna ignore you from that point forward. So highly recommend that you actually get a decent image done for your profile. It doesn't cost much. Um, there's some great articles online on how to get the lighting right and how to get a professional looking image, even if you don't have the money to fork out for a professional photographer. And the background image is another great opportunity to stand out from the crowd. Most people just use the standard wiggly lines or whatever it is on LinkedIn, but it's a great opportunity to position yourself within your industry or your niche. So it's really obvious, you know, what you specialize in and gets people interested to want to see more. It also just looks better. And it is also an opportunity to try and, you can do some really cool things. You can leverage credibility by association with um, brand names that you've worked for or have you talking to a crowd of people, things that help demonstrate authority. Remember the first thing people see when they hit your page is the images. And the Im like the picture can say a thousand words, that, that saying is very, very much true. It's the first thing people see and they'll make very fast first assessments. So make sure it all looks very good. Oops. All right, so once people see that, if it's all checks out, then what will happen is they'll scroll down and you have a, a small section on your profile to have an about section about you. Or as we already know, it's about your client. It has to be about 
what their problems are, how you can help them. And this is kind of like a little micro elevator pitch. It's, you want to structure it out, break it out into headings, answer all the questions that your clients or potential clients want to know in the order they want to know it so that by the end of it, they're ready to take some kind of action. And we always want to finish this with some kind of call to action. Like, do you want them to end up on your website so they can learn more? Do you want them to download a resource or do you want them to reach out and give you a call? The idea here is we want to get their attention fast, identify the problem that we solve or the solution we provide, build credibility and trust around this and get them to want to learn more. Now I'm going to talk a lot about trust. Everything we're doing here is about trust. We want people to trust that we are reputable, credible, and trustworthy so that they want to get on a phone call with us to talk more about what we do. It's all about trying to build trust as fast as possible and credibility is a good way to build trust. So very quick overview of how to optimize your profile. Um, there's some really great resources on the website that go in a little more detail, but I'll leave it at that. Optimize your headline, images, and about section. Once your profile is optimized, the next thing we wanna do is find the right people. Now this is what makes LinkedIn the powerhouse social media platform it is. It is the world's largest up-to-date business professional database. Because people create their own profiles, people generally keep it up-to-date more so than um, some external third party. And most times, if you've ever bought a list before, it's sourced from LinkedIn itself. So if you just use LinkedIn, even for free, you have access to the world's most powerful database for professionals and businesses. Even with the free version of LinkedIn, you can do a lot of really cool things, finding your, you know, basically your exact target market. But if you use the, the premium subscription, so Sales Navigator, wow, it's, um, it's unbelievable. The exact people that you can pull up, your exact target market, high profile people, and you can literally reach out, connect with them and start a conversation. No more trying to call and get through uh, gatekeepers or any of that. You just need to make sure you have a message that solves, um, resonates with your target market, addresses a problem that you actually solve, and then you can reach out, get conversations started. This isn't rocket science. This is really just getting the basics right. And so many people get so confused. They get polluted with all these ideas of, oh, you have to post content. You have to go and comment on people's stuff and doing all these different things. And we're just forgetting about the core foundations. What problem do you solve? Finding the right people and getting your message in front of them. Which brings me to my next point, my next P, the good stuff, the gold, prospecting. Prospecting, actually reaching out to these people, starting conversations and getting people on phone calls. Now this is the part people tend to struggle with or fear the most. And the truth is, I understand why. Like there's a lot of crap on LinkedIn. There's a lot of people reaching out, um, sending really spammy messages to anyone and everyone, and they're giving it a really bad name. But that's where, the, um, that's where your advantage lives. Because when you get your messaging right and your prospecting right, holy moly, do you just make everyone else look like crap and you stand out and my clients honestly can't believe, they're like, wow, I did not think this would be so effective because I've never checked a LinkedIn message in my life. And yet when they start doing it, it's like, wow, I can't believe how many people are actually engaging. So prospecting, it's the process of taking this complete stranger, someone who doesn't know you from bath soap, they don't trust you, someone who doesn't know anything about you. And we wanna take them through to, there we go, a little phone. We wanna take them through to a phone call. We're gonna take a complete stranger on LinkedIn and get them to a call. And we wanna get people on calls as fast as possible. Now, if, if I think about what it takes to generate a, a client from a complete stranger, it's really about building trust. And the way we build trust, if you have to break it down into some kind of mathematical equation, which I would love because I'm an engineer by background, it's touch points over time. Or if you think about it as some sort of gauge, there's a certain amount of trust that needs to be established before someone will want to get on a call with us. And we can build this trust by touch points, so touch points over time, 
or if we have high quality touch points early on, we can boost it much quicker and much faster. Now the quality of touch points are things like the more personalized we can get, the easier it is to build trust. The fastest, easiest way to build trust, have a coffee meeting with someone, meet face to face. Or um, if someone's a friend of yours or you've known them for years, wow, like obviously there's trust already there. But we're talking about strangers. How do we get trust with a complete stranger? And it, it's literally getting touch points in over time. And we wanna try and get a phone call as fast as possible because that's the quickest way, especially in a COVID world where it's harder to meet face to face, to build trust. And by phone call, I mean Zoom call, ideally, because that way we can have a face to face meeting. And I don't know the exact figures, but most of communication is actually not what you say, it's your tone of voice and your body language. So we can build a lot more trust when we can actually see a human being on the other side and we can see their face, how they present themselves. It, it, all, it all really matters and it really helps us. And, it, and if we can quickly see, all right, this is a trustworthy person, then things will progress a lot faster. All right, so what are the steps to take a stranger through to the point where we can have a call with them? And there's three steps. Just get down here. You wanna connect. You want to engage. Hopefully you can see this. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to nurture. All right, we want to connect, we want to engage, and we want to nurture. Three steps to the process. So on LinkedIn, if we can connect with someone, then we can openly talk to them through the Messenger app. So we really want to do this. Otherwise, we can't send them any more messages. And LinkedIn gives you 300 characters to convince a complete stranger to want to join their network. Now, this isn't that hard to do. The real challenge is doing it in a way that gets buy into the idea of what we actually want to talk about and allows us to get to the next step, engaging in a way that has something to do with our service. Now, most people will reach out and they'll be like, hey, let's be friends, let's join my network. I notice you are a professional at what you do, like all this crap that no one is buying anymore. So what we wanna do is we wanna say, we wanna let these people understand the value that we provide. And if we are connecting based on this idea, hey, if this is of interest, then um, it would be great to connect. We've now got buy into the idea. We've got this small piece of engagement that will snowball and buy in, which is, all right, they've connected because it's an interest, because we've said that. And then what we wanna do is engage. Now, once again, some people can do all right at this, they can get some conversation started, but if you do the connection wrong, it's gonna rub people the wrong way if you start hammering them with pitches. So what we wanna to do to get engagement is send a message that is aimed to understand if what we do is something they actually are interested in or even need assistance with. Because how does it, it doesn't make any sense to start pitching someone something if you haven't even asked if it's something they even want help with. So we want to get buy into this idea. And when we have that, then we can transition to the call very quickly. But we need, we need this first, because if we just try and go to a call, it just doesn't make sense and it rubs people the wrong way. And it's amazing. People, a lot of my clients can't believe how effective this is. And they've always thought like, based on all the message they receive, you have to do this really weird passive approach where you have to befriend everyone and, and talk about all the stuff that doesn't matter. So long as you got your profile right, you, you got your positioning right, you know your value you bring, and you're finding the right people, you're connecting with the right people that you can help, this is all gonna go a lot smoother and you're gonna get great engagement and you're gonna get people on calls. Now the real important thing and this is where I think most people struggle, is nurturing these relationships. And the reason people struggle with this is because connecting and engaging, it's a defined process. It's a process that you can delegate to just about anyone or you can get a machine to do it. It's really, it's like send these messages to these people until they reply. Now, when someone replies, some people will wanna go, yeah, let's get on a call right now. And that's great, that's, that's what we want. But some people could take a year and everyone's at different points and 
and everyone's at different positions and everyone's in, they're all over the place. People have trouble managing that. They don't know where everyone's up to. And so if someone doesn't instantly jump on a call, they're leaving like, honestly, like 70% of the money on the table because they don't know how to nurture these relationships, follow people up and keep in touch. Now, remember, you're not at the top of these people's priority list yet. And so it's really important that you get the touch points in over time, follow people up when they ask to be followed up and chase up people who have shown interest, but maybe just haven't got back to you. Very important. And the way we do this is we use our own custom CRM and it's kind of like a CRM before a CRM. It's like, how do you manage complete strangers on LinkedIn or a social media platform through to the point where they're able to enter our own existing sales system or CRM? How do we take a person, we don't have permission to email them yet, we haven't got them on a call yet, and how do we manage and nurture those relationships to the point where I can exit this system and enter another one? And the beauty about this is that when you have this, it really helps guide you in what you need to do each day and makes your life a lot easier. Like I said, 15 minutes, you just come in, you understand who needs to be followed up, who's in your replies, and gets people through to calls really effectively. Which kind of brings me to my next point. So we talked about profile, people, prospecting. Being an engineer, this is my favorite part and probably what I think is the most important, although I've probably said that about most of the steps now. They're all equally important. None of them work without the other. Process, oh my God, if you don't have a process, a repeatable process that reduces the amount of time you have to spend on this, you will not keep this up. It will take you hours every day to manage this if you just try and hit it, hammer it here and there, and you will not get any results because you're not consistent and you're gonna get really pissed off and give up very quickly. This is all about process. Once you get your profile right and your people right and your messaging right, it's just a matter of repeating this process and getting your message in front of the right people. That's why this is so effective. We're really just saying, these are the people I can help. This is the value I can bring and getting in front of enough people, starting enough conversations, developing your relationships so that you can start generating leads and sales really fast. The problem is most people are trying to go straight into posting because it's this nice idea that if we just put something out there, everyone's going to come to us. But it's ludicrous to start with posting because you haven't done anything to build a network. So posting is really powerful once you have an audience, an engaged audience, because it works as it converts a small percentage of that audience. But if your audience is zero and you do posting, you haven't engaged with anyone and you start posting content to zero people or a very, very small, then a very small percentage of zero or very small number is a very small number. We want to engage with people first, have real conversations, build real relationships, then once this starts to grow, as we start creating content, it will now actually resonate with people. It's like I talk about the blue car analogy. So when I was a kid, we bought this Blue Master 3 and I'd never noticed or seen this car before. It, I had never heard of it. It wasn't anything special. But when we bought this car, I couldn't not see it. It was everywhere. It's because we had this real engagement with it. And it's the same thing. If you start posting content and you haven't engaged or warmed up your audience, it just falls on deaf ears. It becomes a wash in the sea of content. But as you start engaging with your audience, that will then start to resonate and actually mean something to these people. And anyone who wants to really establish themselves as an expert in their field, yeah, very important. But a lot of my clients, they just want to get more clients. They're not interested in being like seen as some guru or being super public facing, this is enough. This is enough to start generating clients and work really effectively. And once you have this, you can then scale it because it's repeatable. It's defined by a process. You can delegate, you can give it to your team. They can start generating leads. All you need is the people and to solve a problem and having that very evident on your profile. Amazingly powerful stuff. A lot of my clients honestly can't believe how quickly it works, generating sales as early as the first week. So seriously guys, start using LinkedIn. Start using it because it is such a powerful platform. And remember the four Ps. Optimize your profile. Find the right people. Start talking to them and have a way to manage this all. 
because in, unless you manage it and stay consistent, you're not gonna get anywhere. But with these four Ps, these four Ps alone, you're gonna have a lot of success and you're gonna get a huge amount of value out of LinkedIn. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. And remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you found it useful. And if you didn't find it useful, you didn't like it, hit that like and subscribe button as well. Just do it ironically. Thanks.